do what we've all got a, a cup of coffee or something for the caffeinated for this. I will take you through if I can figure out how to switch here. The opening slides. Um, just a bit of introduction to myself. I, I was speaking recently in Italy, and there were a number of us on the panel speaking, and, and usually it's the moderator's job to introduce the speakers. And the person speaking before me was from MIT, a professor, and he decided it would be best for him to introduce me, although we had never actually met. He took it upon himself to introduce me. He had read my CV, he, he saw that I had been hired about 27 years ago and moved all around the world for various roles in, in, in starting in Canada and then going to the Netherlands and Turkey and Russia and Syria and so on. Anyway, so he decides, he goes, he, he goes the next speaker is going to be Bill Spence. He goes, he's, he's about to go through an interesting career. I'm thinking this. Uh, and he goes, uh, he's been hired by Shell as an energy hunter and gatherer. As an energy hunter and gatherer, sent to the far corners to find this energy and bring it back to our world. And by the time he finishes his career, he'll need to be an energy farmer. He's going to have to figure out how to find that energy within his own borders. And uh, that, that, that intro has been rattling and scaring me ever since. <laughs> as I continue to somewhat uh, hunt and gather. Uh, so what I'd like to do is, is also add my welcome to the, the Technology Center. I, I don't often get here as much as I as I'm really sure, but it is a fantastic place. Um, and I do want to set the context very, very high up, because we often get the chance to see a news article, a newspaper article, without the context. So what I'd like to do is, is try and provide that little bit of context, how the whole energy system ties together. And that will involve me making forward-looking statements. Um, Safety first. <laughs> so I will make forward-looking statements. The world will change. So it's saying, don't act on what I say. And if you do choose to act on what I say, do it at, at your own risk. <laughs> now, um, I want to get off. I'm going to ask you a question. Raise your hand if you dislike audience participation. <laughs> One. Okay, this is a good start. This is a good start. Because what I'm going to ask are a couple quite, what I think are quite simple questions, just to get a, a bit of a, a sense of, of what the scope and scale of the energy sector is. So, what is the global daily oil consumption? How many barrels of oil do we consume in a day? So just for a bit of scope, you know, if you have a vehicle, they're about 160 liters in barrels, roughly, what do we, so we're, we're going to do this for the show of hands, about 25 million barrels a day? So, a, a bit of, but we're sort of 25. Well, it's a bidding round, or? <laughs> yeah, 40, anybody think it's 40? If you were 40, 60? I'm sure it's 60. I know we've got one in 80, anybody else in 80? Go ahead and talk. Indeed. <laughs> Listen to the man in the corner. This is good. So, it is, and this is just oil. Oil is about a third of all the energy that we use. So, it's an enormously big industry that we're dealing with. Now, if we go once in, almost done without any participation. So it's okay. This is the Fortune 500 top. Uh, top 20 companies based on revenues, and you, you probably recognize most of the names on there. Top 20, this is 2010. Six of those names are the super majors. We've got Royal Dutch, ourselves, ExxonMobil, BP, Chevron, Total, and Conway Phillips. Six of the top 20 companies in revenues are oil and gas. So, your next question, please remain silent. If you, I'm sort of imagining that little guy in The Simpsons, the guy who owns a nuclear plant. If you had all six of these, if you owned all six and controlled all six of those super majors, what fraction of that 80 million barrels a day would you have control of, or would you be delivering? 80 percent? Yeah. A few at 80 percent? No. 60 percent? Yeah. Okay, we're starting to get, yeah. At 40%? Yeah. 
Whereas in North America, where I was raised, it was plentiful, and it was very low cost, very low tax. And so it was, it was really used quite excessively. And so the whole idea is, what can we do to get these folks off on a different trajectory when they first build infrastructure? And what do we have to do with all our existing infrastructure to get it to a more efficient place? So that's the whole concept of the energy ladder. Now, it is quite clear as we look into energy demand, when we hear that, where this future demand is going to come from. The bottom is the OECD. You see, if anything, the OECD demand for energy between 2000 and 2030 is going to be flat, if not going down a bit. Whereas all of the growth is going to come from the non-OECD. It's going to come from the, the developing nations as they go up that energy ladder. Now, what I think is more interesting to this, this session, well, having spent 27 years in the oil sector, the, the interesting piece I always find is not the demand, it's the supply side. And we are all in an ideal world, I guess we all imagine that the lovely world we're out here, it's solar panels, it's windmills, it's geothermal, it's, it's all of the renewables. And yet, as we do a, a, a projection forward, and this is the moment we're supposed to go, well, an oil company would say that. But what we look at is where we are in 2000 and what we see going forward. We start at the bottom, the green, the bottom is the natural gas. We see almost a doubling of natural gas delivery between 100 and 30. Uh, crude oil is almost stable, a little bit of growth. Coal, significant growth in coal. We then go forward to biomass, a little bit hard to distinguish is this brown here. Then above the biomass is nuclear. Solar is, is very, very thin. I think I've got a pointer here. Let's see. And it is a green pointer. So this is the, the, the soul of this piece here, and we have wind and the other renewables. And so it is probably that one where you think, well, of course, you, you, you would say that. But and I'll, I'll touch on how we end up in this position.